with cloud native artificial intelligence? Got one, got half of one. Which, which half, the cloud native or the AI? <laughs> Very good. So the goal here is, if you saw the, 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 the description, is to kind of point out some of the projects that are going on. We're not gonna really go into too much depth, it's only 30 minutes. Uh, the main action item here is I'd like to just encourage you to see what the CNAI working group is doing um, and how you may be able to participate or just take the artifacts that are produced from this group uh, to help you do cloud native AI. So to that point, we'll start with the beginning. All right, so what is it? Uh, fortunately, the, the acronym is very simple and it is kind of to the, to the point. So the goal here is uh, as, a, as a kind of just topical area, what, what does it mean? We wanna make it easy to do AI with cloud native tech. That's it, nothing more, nothing, nothing less. So there's entire ecosystems doing machine learning that don't do cloud native technologies, right? They're not using Kubernetes, right? Um, for our part, our neck of the woods, we're trying to focus in on cloud native technologies, containerization, orchestration, all these kinds of things and make it easy. And so hopefully by the end of this talk, we'll convince you on how we're making it easier. Okay, officially speaking, this is still the definition of what cloud native is kind of highlighted the part that's of, we'll say, tactical importance. So cloud native technologies empower organizations to build and run scalable applications in modern dynamic environments. And so here, these, you know, this talks about containers, this talks about orchestration. Uh, this definition is actually currently under review, but it'll largely stay the same even when the next version of it uh, comes out. So this really was written in a time when we were talking about stateless services, right? Kubernetes comes out through the good replication. Uh, and if you really, from the early days, it talked about uh, cattle and pets, right? Those were the analogies, right? And so ultimately um, that wasn't enough. So we started to get into stateful applications where we had, especially with database persistence, that led us to the creation of things like PVs and PVCs to manage that persistence, right? And all the technologies uh, that, that go along with it. What it didn't really handle was any particular workloads, right? When this system was built, it was meant to be a generic kind of platform to run any kind of workload, but we saw very early on that we have to do more than stateless, we have to do stateful, but now we need to be even more specific. What does it mean to do, in this case, machine learning in artificial intelligence. What does that kind of flow look like? And can it actually sit uh, cleanly on top of something like a cloud native platform? So to help this happen and to make it easier to use cloud native technology, um, we don't define artificial intelligence here, right? It means different things to different people, but I think everyone's got a general uh, understanding of an ML pipeline and all those kinds of technologies. So a group was formed at the Cloud Native Compute Foundation called the CNAI Working Group. I'm one of the co-leads, and this is actually the first paper we created. This was released at KubeCon Paris a couple of months ago, and it was the first attempt to actually kind of boil the ocean, right? What's going on in this space? What are the tools that are people are using? Now, you know, it's, it's been since March. We can look back at this and say, hey, that was an okay attempt. Um, you can see there's quite a number of authors here, and they come from a pretty big background. Um, we have people who are security experts, we had people who are AI experts, we had people who are, we'll just say cloud native operational experts, but still, it's still a pretty small group compared to the actual pra you know, practicing community. So what we'd like to do to improve something like this is actually get more into the foundational research, you know, surveys, things like this, what tools are people actually using? So as a, as just kind of a tie back to the Cloud Native Compute Foundation, what is their mission as a, the parent group? Their mission is to actually make software that you can use, right? We, we don't wanna just talk about theoretical aspects of software in the CNCF. 
We actually want to create things that can be deployed to actually enable whatever kind of business functionality that, that you need. So more on the practical versus the, the academic side. And so in this case, this paper was a good start, but most of us who are involved do realize uh, we need more from the community, more inputs on what people are using so we can actually focus and produce artifacts and reference implementations that people can actually use. So one of the issues now in, in the AI space is we've all seen a hundred different presentations on, on RAG. But what, what resource could you go online and be like, how to implement it? Like, where's the Helm chart that just does it, right? At some level, RAG is just a cache, right? So there's tons of Helm charts to do that for, for web servers, right, using Redis and, and things like that. So if it's such a simple um, architecture, why can't we just have that ease of use in the standard tooling? So that's part of what we're trying to do. We're trying to find, it's not that people haven't been trying, Right, very often it's some personal project or something like that, but those don't get the eyes and the attention or the critical review from the community. Right, so we're trying to get people together to kind of unify those resources uh, so it can be easier to do these kinds, kinds of efforts. So anyway, check out the paper. Any feedback uh, would be much appreciated. Another artifact of the, the working group is the landscape. So, I was one of the leads on this, and it's pretty sparse. If you're familiar with the, lands the actual CNCF landscape, it's, you're, you go blind. There's, there's so, so many things, and you, you know, there's a lot of jokes around the utility of such a thing. But um, I would argue the real utility isn't so much the landscape itself, it's what comes next, right? Someone took the time to classify these tools and systems and then what comes next are concerns like maturity, around security, performance, um, who's gonna support it long into the future, right? You can't really see that kind of information on something like this. But once you have this group being a volunteer organization, when someone says, hey, I wanna participate and help, help the group, what could I do? Well, there are little things you can do. You can actually go and research, you know, the workload observability section and say, hey, which one of these are currently getting traction? Which ones are not getting, gaining traction, right? There's basic rules to be listed here. For one, uh, as an example, is you have to have 300 stars on, on GitHub, right? If you're below that, you can't be listed. Well, what happens if you lose that? Should it be removed, right? So someone has to curate this, and then this leads to potentially other artifacts that could be used for uh, tool consideration, you know, things like radars, um, just for general, discussion points. So we're always looking for people to help with this as well. Uh, I have to give credit to Peter Pan. Um, I, I started this, but he really came in the clutch and, and really cleaned it up. So there's, there's more to do. So anyway, this is under, if, uh, I think I have a, might have a laser on here, but if you see the blue up there, CNAI, this, again, this is new. You may have seen the CNCF landscape before. That box just showed up a couple weeks ago. So click on that and you'll, uh, hopefully see some updates. I just added KHGPT to this last night. So even this is already um, out of date. As a group, um, we try to mention, you're starting to see some of the things we've been producing. We also are working on blogs, white papers, and guides. Um, we have monthly meetups, or actually bi-monthly or bi-weekly meetups, depending on your, your way you use the term. Um, we also work with other groups. So we've worked with the, the Linux Foundation Data and AI, uh, the, the, the Gen AI Commons. Uh, we also work with, with other groups like the Internet Society, uh, the Association for Computing Machinery. So if you happen to be involved in any of those groups as well, we try to collaborate, uh, produce talks, get the experts to, to chime in on these kinds of papers. So this here is uh, Adel, another one of the co-leads. This is his baby. Uh, every time we have a meeting, he will summarize the notes so you could come here and see what the kind of the general discussion uh, was about. All of our meetings are recorded. You can go back and, and watch what's going on. And again, what we try to do is uh, decide which projects we want to work on. It is a volunteer effort, so we really can't force anyone to do anything, but we try to work as a team to come up with specific 
uh, artifacts. So you can check. Uh, we have a project dashboard. Anyone can look at it. You don't have to be a member. You can see the kind of things uh, that we're doing. So what is it that we actually think is going to be helpful to people? So as an example, one is this news summarizer. So the news summarizer is actually for two purposes. One is to demonstrate the technology, just AI tech in general, right? Another one is to provide that reference implementation, right? People want to do this, but they don't want to start from scratch. Also, even if you could get it installed, they want to see who can help them on day two, right? So you get something installed and now you're lost again, right? Well, who are you going to talk to? Right? Especially if you're on a smaller team, there actually may be no one to talk to. Right? So, so in theory, you could talk to us and you can reference these kinds of systems and talk about them and get help on the particulars uh, of the technology or the techniques. We are friendly with most of the, the projects in the CNCF landscape. So if you, for example, are in observability and you have any kind of challenges there, uh, we can put you in touch with the people at Otel as an example, right? And you could do that yourself, but uh, we're already working with them for, for many um, projects. All right, some of the projects that are managed by the, the CNCF include uh, Kubeflow and KGPT. The reason we like to highlight these particular projects, I should say projects of these styles, is just how to think about them. So it mentions here tooling for AI and AI for tooling. What, this is one of the areas we've decided to, to kind of focus on, is there's people who want to build models, and there's people who want to use models to make their lives easier. All right, and that's kind of how we separate the world here. And so, you know, Kubeflow um, will help you train, and you know, there's all the hyperparameter management with Katib, and there's KServe, and all these projects that can help you build and host these models. And then you have something like KHGPT, where it'll evaluate your cluster and tell you what you're doing good or doing bad at, right? And so these two, the tools are evolving. So Kubeflow can be quite complex, right? They, they try to make it secure and automate everything so you don't have to. Uh, but that's a lot to, to, to look at and, and learn, so it's good to know where you can get help. KHGBT, on the other hand, is a newer project, and it has um, some integration to evaluate your cluster. Just curious, anyone here using KHGPT? And thumbs up, thumbs down? Would you go with it? It's just the beginning, that's right. But it's, it, you know, uh, I like to point newcomers to this area, the KHGPT, for one particular reason. It's not that complicated, right? You can download a binary, point it to your cluster, and say, analyze. And it, whoosh, there you go. It gives you generally useful output. Uh, and better still, um, if you do, do the full AI-based analysis, it'll actually give you advice on what to do about it to fix whatever the error is that you see. So I'm working, actually uh, speaking next week at uh, uh, SecureCon in Seattle, and we've made a custom version of KGPT to, to include Kiverno. And the idea there is, is can you use uh, policy to, to have this tool tell you how to secure your cluster uh, even better, right? And the point there is, again, is to show people how to do it, right? We, we as a, a group at the CNCF are trying to show like, hey, you don't have to be the best Go programmer or the best AI person to work to help these projects uh, mature. And so that's, that's the goal there. And the original creators are very uh, pleasant to work with. So here's an example, if you hadn't seen KHGPT, Again, out of the box, it's just a single binary you wouldn't download. It uses your cube uh, CTL config file to find your cluster. And here you just say analyze. And for those who have never used it, it's very simple, two-step process. The first analysis is hard-coded. It's, it's meant to be hard-coded advice. So there's hundreds of rules that are hard-coded specifically to Kubernetes, right? It's like you mislabeled something. You or out of RAM, you, are, you know, it does all these kind of hard-coded checks, and that's what this is showing us. So the, this is just a good example of a practical tool. This, at this point, is using no AI, right? So it, but it's still useful to some degree. 
The real power is when you do this and you say, explain. Uh, forget the other part for a moment. If you just do explain, that takes the analysis from step one and sends it to an LLM. And then it gives you the expansion of it, right? Now, just like any LLM project, <laughs> the answers may be good, they may be bad, right? It's, it's a work in progress. Um, what you're actually seeing here is, is the output of our custom Kiverno version, where we actually uh, change the prompt to actually tell us, instead of explaining natural language what the solution is, tell us what to do with kubectl, right? Just give us an actual action to do, and then of course this leads to agentic-like uh, desires, right? We want to take that and actually just automate it, right? And that's kind of the, the next goal of this kind of tooling. Uh, additionally, in this case, we added direct Olama support just to prove we could, uh, because out of the box it currently does not. And again, this is just to show that um, these tools can be modified, and if you know who to talk to, they'll teach you how to do it, and you can customize it to your own uh, environment. Actually, I'll say one, one more thing here. For those who are new to CNAI, or AI, or CN, another thing that this is really good at is if this first part where you don't use AI is telling us exactly what's wrong, right? This is kind of the same error you would see coming out of the normal Kubernetes tools. If you are an expert, you know exactly what this is telling you, right? So what's the real power? The real power here is, is when you're not an expert, it gives you some background, some context. It gives you actual actions, right? That's the real power, right? And so this, to, to me, this is actually more about helping your, the people who are new, your junior developers, things like that, to, to have some kind of way to self-study, self-actuate, all right? That that's, to me, is what the value is of something like this at this stage. Additional projects that, that are going on. Um, so this is an example of a reference implementation to do AI. So uh, open platform for generative AI, OPIA. This is actually out of Intel, uh, but it is, it is open source. And so uh, Intel, along with many other companies, are members of our uh, group um, and the CNCF. And so what OP is trying to do is give us that guide, right? Can we go somewhere and actually have a guide on how to implement a full-blown, you know, RAG system or, or many, you know, chat, like the, all those kinds of ways of thinking about the systems we want. Uh, here we can see chat, cogen, document uh, summary, right? Can we have a basic Helm-like experience to deploy from start to finish? And that's what this project is all about. So if you go on their website, this is the kind of things you, you would see. So one is you know, general architecture, uh, and we'll see in just a moment, we'll look at a little demo that it, just to prove to you that it actually, actually works, right? So this, this uh, particular architecture here using RAG may not be so, uh, we'll say, innovative or anything like that. You may have seen something like this already. The, the, I would argue the connection here is, is this will lead us to an actual script that installs it, right? And, ex and starts to explain it. So let's take a look, quick look at just proving that something like this does exist and it does work. All right, hopefully you can see this. Sorry, it was recorded in a, in a bit of a laptop here. I'm just gonna kind of describe what, what we're looking at. Okay. So by the way, you'll be able to download this, and it, there is audio. So, so uh, Iris from Intel, she was kind enough to build this for me um, this weekend to show you know, kind of the latest build. So in this example, what we're, what's being done is the, the OPS system, there's a controller, right? That's kind of the core of the system. That is a, it's a Kubernetes operator, and it's been deployed. All right, it's been deployed. That's what we see, the, the Gen MC controller. So it's been deployed. There is a CRD that it reads that you describe your pipeline, 
right? If it's a chat app, it has particular toolings. If it's you know, a, a video or a text processor, it has particular groupings of technologies. Those are described in this custom CRD uh, format. And so uh, we don't see the installation here. So, so the, the operator was, was installed. And sorry, she's, uh, she's currently talking. That's why nothing's happening right now. Okay. Here is the CRD. Now, I know it's going by fast. You can't really see it. But these are all the components and access points to those components. And so, again, if you're new to the cloud native side of the house, forget that it's AI. This is standard Kubernetes tech, right? Creating an operator, creating a CRD that it uses and manages. This is standard stuff, right? And that's the nice thing here. We're not having to do anything new, right? It may have come from Intel, right? Some people are like, oh, is it all, you know, just their stuff? Uh, absolutely not. It completely can run without any of their, their proprietary uh, things. Um, so anyway, the operator is going to re read this CRD. It's going to make sure all those services are up and running. So that's what's happened here. Again, there's conversation in the video. Try to fast forward a little here. Okay, there's those services, right? So that, art, that diagram we just saw a second ago, that's everything up. Uh, this is the endpoint system that's being listed currently so we can access them. And because it's a CRD, we want the, the entry point to our whole system we just deployed, right? I don't care about the things in the back end, I want the front end. Right? So there's the, the, the access point there. And then from here, if you've got any familiarity with curl, right, we could just use it as a service. It depends on what you installed. In this case, it's chat, right? So can we, um, uh, in this case, we're going to ask a particular finance question. It is a rag-based system in this demo. And so it, um, we didn't see it, but it, it loaded the docs into the, the database. And it's going to ask a particular question um, on finance, and you're going to get the response back, right? So again, it's a standard architecture, right, as far as the RAG setup is. It's the standard Kubernetes tooling, but we see it time and again. People come asking for advice on like how to do it. Some people are overthinking it. Some people are just new, and they just don't know all the pieces. Uh, and that's OK. And so the idea is something like Opia could actually do it. Here we are actually running. So here's a curl request. What is the revenue of Nike in 2023? Right? You have various controls uh, for token generation and, and the like. And then we should see the result here in just a moment. And there's, there's, your, uh, there's the result. So we have to uh, format those. And there, there's, of course, uh, libraries to do that. But that, that's what I wanted to show you. So the, the main part is this just got released. Um, so Pia, the project, has been under development for a while. And again, if you go to their website, you'll see there's pre-canned pipelines for all the standard LLM type activities, chat, voice processing, all those things, so you don't have to start from scratch. It also has support for Gaudi, that, this is the Intel piece, right? So there is, there is support, so there's containers that are purpose-built for for those you know, GPUs and, and CPUs. And then there's the gener uh, generic like Xeon, right, uh, style one. So you can just use it uh, anywhere you'd have a sys-based uh, system. So anyway, take a look at that. Um, they are looking for volunteers uh, as well. Okay. All right, I mentioned um, us as a, as, a, as a group. And so we go by the Cloud Native AI Working Group. We are technically under the tag runtime, uh, which is the technical uh, steering committee for part, one, of the, one of the tags of the CNCF. There's also tag security, uh, tag observability. Um, we might get promoted into our own tag, but um, things are working just fine for now. So from an administrative point of view, I think we're, we're, we're fine where, where we're at. But we do work with other Linux Foundation groups. So um, for example, the generative uh, AI Commons uh, at an earlier talk today uh, mentioned they are creating a paper on responsible AI. 
right? What does that look like? How might you go about doing that? So we've been trying to assist them in, in those efforts. Unfortunately, the paper wasn't ready uh, for today, but it should be uh, available in the next couple of weeks. We are creating a, a scheduling paper. So uh, our group is uh, kind of boiling the ocean for all things scheduling around AI workloads. And so that paper should be out in another couple of weeks uh, as well. Turns out it's very uh, complicated because there's, uh, I don't know, maybe a thousand different ways to schedule things. So how do you convincingly uh, explain those and select those is, 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 a, is a lot of work. Um, what's not listed here is we also try to work with, again, other groups like the Internet Society and the ACM um, and IEEE. And that's, again, because we, you know, a lot of experts live in those societies, and they may come and uh, present. They may come work on papers with us. And really, the point is, is we hope you do too, right? We want, um, we, we need volunteers. Uh, we want to make it easy to do cloud-native tech. And I think this is what I will we'll end you with. Here's our sneak preview of our, our scheduling paper. Uh, for you, the challenge is, if you would like one of uh, the characters from the CNCF or SOX, all I ask you do is join our, join our Slack and then come up and, come up and pick. And um, yeah, other than that, I'll uh, take any, any questions. All right, well, thank you. And uh, if you have any questions in the future, uh, just find us, find us there, happy to, happy to help. Thanks.